in this video, what we're going to be doing is going over the perfect Windows light installation. Now, you may have heard of some of those lightweight ISOs, such as a Teeny 11, Atlas OS, that cuts out a lot of the bloat, removes things like the ads, Copilot, takes up less disk space and RAM, making some of those become relatively popular. They're just not very safe or secure. It removes the uh, Windows component store. They don't receive updates the same. Windows Defender is gone or disabled out of the box. They're just not a good bet. And no, this isn't going to be a debloat script. This is going to be from Microsoft directly. They have dropped Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTS C. Yes, it is the same popular Windows operating system with the compatibility, management, security, so on and so forth. But this is intended for IT professionals, device makers, software developers, people like that. It's literally a stripped down, bloated Windows LTS. I'll link to a bunch of resources down below. You go into more specifics of what it is here. It's supposed to be a fixed function. Uh, purpose, special devices, 10 years of life cycle support, which is decent. And actually, I've been playing around with it a little bit. I installed it on this Intel Nook here. So if I go ahead and go to my capture card, this is my LTS or Windows LTS C installation right here. It's not completely lightweight because I've been adding things, but I did some tweaks, disabled animations, and this is all it really came with. The things I added were Firefox and some of the Intel stuff. But you can see, oh, a Nova Bench, some benchmarking tools. But you could see there's almost nothing here. And you'll see that again when we get it installed. There's no widgets or anything. There's no Copilot. It's just a absolute base Windows install missing almost everything. It didn't even include the Microsoft Store. I'll show you how to add that. But generally, I like to add the things I need instead of having to sit there and remove the things I don't. That's just how I like to operate. And this allows me to do that. Now, of course, there is a catch, but we will be getting into that right after I thank the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare. I've been wanting to up my skills in things I do every day within my home lab. I've recently finished up the Python 101 for beginners course and it has been incredibly helpful with some of the things that I've been doing and I now doing some more advanced things such as the TPC socket programming course and I really really need to do project management stuff I need to learn you probably already knew that if you see my upload schedule another thing you probably already know is Skillshare is one of the largest online learning communities led by industry experts across film, design, freelance photography, and more. Skillshare can take your skills, passions, hobbies, side projects to the next level. I've been using it here and there because it is my personal duty for what I do here on the channel to expand my knowledge and just about anything I can to serve you guys better. And better yet, the first 500 people to click the link down below will get a one month trial to Skillshare. So you can check it out, explore, see if it's right for you. So again, go down to the description, click the first link down below to go ahead and get started today. So what is the catch you may be wondering? And that is, this is an evaluation version. Unfortunately, uh, to actually buy this, it requires you to have, and not Windows Home money, I'm talking like uh, bulk purchase enterprise purchasing money. And worse yet, the evaluation period is 90 days. So you could use it however you want for that period. And when the 90 days hits, it's going to automatically turn itself off every hour. Very, very annoying. Now, a resource that you should absolutely avoid is this right here, massgrave.dev. While I would recommend you read it because they go into some more information on this trial period and stuff, there's other things that you may not want to go to because it may violate TOS. So um, when you check out this resource, make sure you only read this for informational purposes. With that, downloading it through Microsoft in the evaluation, all you do is click right here, download. It's gonna take you to this thing. You're gonna to have to fill out all this, hit download, and you're going to be able to grab it. So for this, I'm gonna actually kind of use it like an IoT device. This is my Proxmox instance, and I have been using this right here, this Windows 10 machine, or this Windows 10 VM for quite a while for little things that I can't do in Linux. I've used it as a test bench for Blue Iris, and I use it to make like Windows USB sticks. And over here, I've already uploaded the uh, Microsoft download of the evaluation version right here. You can see eval. And I'm just going to create a quick virtual machine. The installation process past this point is the same, whether you install it here or on a computer or directly on hardware. This is temporary, so I'm just going to call it 999. Win LTS. This is going to be Windows. 
this is gonna be fine. We're gonna pick our ISO image and we might as well drop in those vert IO drivers. I'm gonna just put everything in flash, give it just a little bit more room. Again, this is just for testing purposes, for dare I say, evaluation purposes. Next, give it a little bit of CPU action. RAM is fine. Again, this is an IOT version. It shouldn't need that much resources. Yeah, it's, it's Windows. Let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and give that a <laughs> go next. Uh, boom, boom, everything looks good. We will start it right away, hit finish, and then jump on into the installation. And a really cool thing about this is, unlike the current version of Windows or Windows 11, um, you don't have to actually log into an online account or anything like that. It's as it should be. So I'm gonna hit I agree, install Windows 11. We're gonna go accept their agreement. Searching for disks, it can't find the disk. Uh, I'm gonna load the driver from our Vert.io. See if this helps it out. And this is technically Windows 11. Hit okay, and we want this one, install. Hey, we can see our disk here, but just for best practices, I'm gonna load in some of the other drivers real quick. And one more, our memory booling driver. Balloon, there we go. So now we got our drivers, let's go ahead and go next on this installation. We're gonna create it or install it right here. And we're gonna install Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTS C and hit install. So give that some time. This is what's gonna look for like for a while. It's probably gonna restart a couple times and then we're gonna be good to go. All right, a couple reboots later, we are here. This is going to look pretty standard, except for the fact it doesn't make us log in or have an internet connection or anything like that. Uh, we are gonna skip this. Granted, I do think, as you can see, this is receiving an internet connection, but if we didn't have one, we would be able to actually proceed with the installation. And here it is, the forbidden sign-on screen. Of course, you could do this if you want to, but I'm gonna do join domain instead, and we are going to just fill it in like this. My name, uh, password, like that, and some security questions. Now, I would not recommend you do it as I do, because this is not a secure way to do it. But I'm just trying to get through this. Again, I'm merely evaluating the software. No, 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 still got to disable all this crap. No, 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 and accept. And there we go. So it's updating, it's doing its normal installation process. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of time, and then we'll jump into the desktop, in which I'll be showing you some additional tips and tricks to get some of the things back, make it even a little more lightweight, so on and so forth. So here we are on our very first boot. So I could kind of show you what this looks like here. Hi. And here we are. You could see absolutely nothing in pinned. And the only thing really recommended here is uh, getting started. If I do go to all, this is what it looks like straight out of the gate. We have Windows tools, uh, the snipping tool, paint, notepad, browser, files, calculator, and some accessibility. <clears throat> and that is truly it. Absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look at our task manager and see what we have going on in the background. You can see the task manager itself is using a fair bit of resources. It might be trying to pull updates. Uh, background task host is suspended and there's really not too much in here, just a bunch of Windows services. But if I give it a minute just to kind of settle down here, it should kind of balance out around two to uh, three percent utilization. At least it did on this dedicated hardware. This is a VM and I haven't installed all the drivers. And there it goes. So now it's kind of balancing out just a little bit there. And before I show you how to actually pick up some of the applications that we're missing, such as the Microsoft Store, let's say you want the Xbox app or the Windows Terminal, you can still get those tools, but you kind of have to manually pull them. I'm gonna show you some little tweaks and tricks to make it uh, even a little bit more performant or at least seem more performant. And the first little post install tweak that I'm gonna do is disable the telemetry. So I'm not gonna be communicating anything with Microsoft. And for that, we're gonna go and edit the group policy. So we're gonna click on this. And then from here, we're gonna open up administrative, um, Windows components, make this a bit bigger so we can see. And then we got the data collection for the preview builds, make this a bit bigger here. And we are going to go under allow diagnostic data. Double click on that to open this up here. I'm actually going to hit enabled because this will then allow us some options, which I will pick the one that says diagnostic data off, not recommended. 
for most like free and open source applications, I usually send diagnostic data, but I'm not really using this in the way that they at least expect me to. So I don't really find it necessary. They're not going to need my data. I don't want to send them my data. So there we go. Now, Microsoft Edge is pre-installed and it does still start up in the background. So to disable that, we're going to go back over to the task manager. And then right here under the startup applications, you can kind of see it right there. I haven't even opened it yet, but it's still running. Hogging 50 megabytes of RAM. We do not want that. So I'm going to go over here to startup tasks. And you can see there's only two things in there. Security uh, health system and Microsoft Edge. Let's disable Microsoft Edge. So now that's not gonna start up in the background for us. Now we can disable some of the animations and some of the things that makes it kind of pretty, which is gonna be very helpful for me running this through a virtual machine, which I'm gonna primarily view through no VNC. So the less kind of animations and pretty effects, the better experience I'm personally gonna have. To do that, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna search for adjust and under settings, adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. We're gonna click on that and then this is all the different animation settings. I am going to get rid of most of these. So I'm going to start off by doing adjust for best performance, which will disable everything. And then I'm going to add a couple. I'm going to add the first one, animate controls and elements inside windows. And then down here, I'm going to use drop shadows for icons on the desktop, smooth scroll list boxes, smooth the edges of screen fonts. And not that one. We're going to show windows contents when dragging. So that's all I'm going to enable for now. I'm going to hit apply. And then okay. So there we go. And now the very last thing I believe I'm going to do. So there we go. And now the very last thing I believe I'm going to do is disable the transparency. And of course, all this is optional. Uh, let's go to settings. And then in here, we're going to search for visual, visual effects right there. So it's under accessibility. And we have the transparency effects. Just disable that. And then the animation effects, we're gonna go ahead and disable that. So there we are. I've disabled a lot of things. I've disabled a lot of the animations. So now this is gonna be a pretty nice kind of Proxmox experience on here. Now on to getting some of the tools that we are missing. So what we are going to do is go over to our PowerShell. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna run this as administrator. And to get the Microsoft Store, we are simply going to run ws reset dash i hit enter and then give it a little bit of time should work in the background and eventually we're going to get some kind of notification or the store is just going to appear again it might take it a little bit of time so it's been about uh two minutes or so and you can see the microsoft store has been added right there so then you could open it up and just use it and it doesn't seem that it's requiring me to sign into an account which is magnificent. Now, to actually get some of these other applications, such as, uh, let's say I want Windows Terminal, uh, the first thing I'm gonna want is actually Winget. Heading over to their GitHub page, this is Winget CLI. This is the official Windows Package Manager for the command line. If I scroll down here, we can see the information on installing Winget. Now that we have the Microsoft Store, we can just click right here, get the App Installer Package. Click on install here, and then we have the app installer. So I'm just going to get this application and this will add all the dependencies and everything that we need to use Winget. So there we go. It is installed. And before we open up the uh, PowerShell again, I'm going to show you a nice little resource to uh, get the commands you need to install packages. And for that, we're going to go over to winstall.app. And here you could search for packages. So if I search for terminal, for example, and we want to grab the Windows terminal, I would just give this a click. And then we have the entire command right here. So you just give this a copy, go back over to our PowerShell, drop that on in, hit enter. We got to agree to some stuff apparently to use CLI. And just like that, it is done. So now I should be able to stop having to use PowerShell and I will have the uh, Windows terminal application right here. Beautiful, still PowerShell, different front end. Now, as you can see here, another thing that's kind of important to note is not everything that uh, Microsoft makes is going to show up through here. Uh, down in the description, I have it actually right here. It's a bunch of different codes that you use to pull these apps. So we have like Microsoft People, um, News, Maps, uh, To Do, Sticky Notes, a bunch of stuff like that. So if you want any of those specific Microsoft tools that aren't listed here, uh, th there's ways to find how to get all of those. So yeah, that's about it. That is the official way to get a or the lightest version 
of Windows 11 made by Microsoft themselves, which honestly, for me personally, this is probably going to be the way that I install Windows going forward. Granted, there are the uh, kind of limitations of this being a 90 day evaluation, but if you have a, actually have like a large scale business use for it, congratulations, you can buy it. Otherwise, uh, Google is going to be your best friend or even Bing. You can Bing it. With all that, anything I mentioned will be linked down below. I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.